Well, we're ready to start uh, refactoring our ice cream store uh, application. And here I have it open just to remind us what it does. So I can enter a number of scoops, um, choose a flavor, choose some toppings, possibly choose a souvenir spoon, and I get a nice receipt. Okay, now what I want to do, I'm going to change the code, but not change what the actual application does. So as far as the user is concerned, nothing is going to change. And I discussed why I want to do this in my uh, discussion of designing with procedures. Okay, so let's go on over to the developer tab in Visual Basic and um, let's get the form and view the code. Okay, and I'm going to enlarge my window a little bit here. So, looking at things, I basically right now I've got two procedures. I've got my user form initialize procedure, which is short and sweet. It does one type of thing, and it does it fine, and I don't see any reason to want to break that up. On the other hand, if I look at my button order click procedure, it's fairly substantial here. It goes on for a while, and it might not be that easy to read. So what I'd like to do is look for some opportunities to break this up into separate procedures. So one thing I can see, so I'm looking for pretty substantial pieces of code that do something uh, fairly cohesive. So like for example here, the part that gets the flavor ordered and sets the flavor price, those are a couple of things that I could replace with procedure calls. Uh, well in this case it would be function calls since I need a value. Um, Here's another place where I get the topping cost. Some of these are little like this. No point in messing with those. And then there's this huge part that prints the receipt. So that's another place where I might want to make some changes and create a procedure. Okay, so let's go back here. And I'm going to start by creating a function procedure that gets the name of the flavor. Now, in this little um, if structure here, I'm getting both the name of the flavor and the price, but in order to um, have a function that just returns one value, I'm going to have to write two functions. So let's just, what I'd like to do is first go ahead and put in the function call, and as I look at this, to get the flavor name, I just have to know which option button is checked. Well, that's like a global procedure, um, sorry, global variable, in the sense that it's available to my procedure, and so I don't have to worry about it. Um, oh, and the other thing this does, by the way, is check whether a flavor has actually been selected. So. Um, we can also write a procedure to do that. So we're going to have three stages. Let's say uh, check if a flavor was selected, and if a flavor was selected, get the name of the flavor, and then if a flavor was selected, get the price. Okay, so to check if a flavor was actually chosen, we're going to have to make sure that at least one of these options was chosen. and. Um, Let's see, it's actually, it's a little weird to make it a procedure, but let me go ahead and do that. I kind of want to go overboard here. So, okay, um, what I'm going to say is if um, flavor not, let's do it this way, if not flavor chosen, then, and I'm going to put my um, things I do when there's an error like that. So I'll go, uh, let's do end up here first. And then I'm just going to copy these guys. Copy and paste. Okay. Alright, so what is this? 
this is a function call to a function that returns true or false. So let's go write that. So put it down here. Start a new. So we'll do function flavor chosen. And this is going to be Boolean. Okay. And I'll put end function in. And now how do I know if a flavor's been chosen? Well, I want to look at all those um, different options. And a nice way to do it, I can just copy this guy. Copy and repurpose it. I'm going to copy and oops, it already put an end function for me. And let's do a paste. So what I want is if this option vanilla value equals true, then uh, flavor chosen equals true. And let's indent it. Oh, I see. It's already indented. Um, what I need to do is unindent this guy. Uh, also here, in this case, we have flavor chosen equals true. And in this case, we also have flavor chosen equals true. And here, if nothing was chosen, then we have Push the wrong button there. Flavor chosen equals false. Okay, and now that I have that, I no longer need the else here. Because that will all be taken care of before I ever get to this piece of code. So, okay, you see how I've restructured my program a little bit? So now I'm going to save this and run it. What, already? Yeah, because I'm following my principle of um, only writing a little code and then testing it. So let's go ahead. We'll run the macro. Uh, okay. And I'm going to neglect to choose a flavor. Okay. So I see everything's working well. Let's go back to the code. Now the next thing I want to do is write a little procedure that will return the flavor price. So I'm going to put um, a flavor price equals get flavor price. And again, I don't need to give it any information, so I can just go like this. Okay, and here's something I can do. Let's just copy this. Copy. And now I'll come down here. I want to start a new function. Now I should be putting banner comments on all of these as I go along, and I'm not, to save time in the video. But in the one that's posted, they'll be there. So get flavor price. And it actually made an end function for me. And I want to say what type this is. This is a double. Okay. Now I'm going to go back up here, and I'm going to copy and now I'm going to come down here and paste. Okay, this needs to be indented. Let's create a space there. Same thing here. Although we don't need any local variables, it's nice to leave a little space between the header and the code. And um, what I'm going to do is just take out the things I don't need and leave this. And instead of, okay, now here I'm setting a variable flavor price. Now I could replace each of those places with get flavor price, but let's do it this way. Let's set up a local variable, um, dim flavor price as double. And then at the end of all these ifs here, I'll do 
um, get flavor price equals flavor small f. Why did I need to create a new local variable? Because flavor of price is local to this procedure up here, and so it wouldn't be available to my new procedure. Local variables are only available inside their own procedure. Okay, one more here. Um, flavor name equals get flavor name. And this one's very similar. So let's copy. Come down here. Function get flavor name. And the flavor name is a string. So let's say as string. Okay. Um, back up here. Now this time, I'm going to actually take this. Don't need it anymore. Uh -huh. See how much neater and smaller my main procedure will be? And let's just paste it down here. And we'll do the same way we did before. We'll set up a local variable, dim uh, flavor name as Okay, it can go through the same set of choices, although, um, sorry, I'm going to get rid of this. Oh, and you'll notice the flavor prices were global. So again, I didn't need any parameters or communications. Um, and that's a good reason, by the way, why we often make um, constants as globals. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, get flavor name equals flavor name. Alright, and let's save this. Now I did two of these. I really should have tested after each one. But let's go ahead and try it now. So we'll run this guy. Uh, so let's say we want three scoops of chocolate with whipped cream. Okay, and looks like things are working. Now I might want to actually run through my whole suite of tests at this point to make sure I haven't messed anything up. But, um, you know, so I, I'm pretty comfortable though that everything's okay. So I'm going to go back in now and put my banner comments in and stuff. I won't do that in the video, but I'll do it and when we start the next video, they'll be there and we'll go on to the next phase.